When starting a new run in Elden Ring, you're greeted with a cutscene that introduces a whole bunch of events, characters, and concepts that may be confusing to the player at first. So, in this video, I'll be explaining this cutscene with as much detail as possible in under 5 minutes. The cutscene opens with the sound of a hammer on metal, and we are told, The fallen leaves tell a story. This refers to the leaves of the Air Tree, an enormous, golden tree that was given life through the power of the Elden Ring, which is a collection of runes that define the nature of reality, and the Air Tree is described to shower blessings with its falling leaves. However, the next line describes how the Elden Ring was shattered, which, in turn, leaves the Air Tree a shadow of its former self and corrupts the nature of reality. We are then shown two figures working with a hammer. We first see Queen Merica, who is the goddess who used the Elden Ring to create the Air Tree and establish the laws of reality known as the Golden Order, but is shown here shattering the Elden Ring. Then, we see another deity named Lord Radigan attempting to repair the Elden Ring. Radigan functioned as Queen Merica's second husband and Elden Lord, the one who helps control the Elden Ring. It's also important to know that before Radigan, Godfrey was Merica's first husband and the first Elden Lord, and Radigan was married to someone named Vernala before he married Merica. The narrator also clarifies that these events occur in the lands between, across the fog, which just refers to the region that this game takes place in. We are told Queen Merica, who is this figure, is nowhere to be found, as she seems to have disappeared shortly after the shattering of the Elden Ring. Here, we see Godwin the Golden, son of Godfrey and Merica, being killed by assassins in the Night of the Black Knives, an event in which multiple demigods, which are the immortal descendants of the gods in the lands between, were able to be murdered after an unspecified character coordinated the theft of a portion of the Elden Ring known as the Rune of Death. Stealing a fragment of the Rune of Death was necessary because Merica was able to seal away this portion of the Elden Ring that dictates the destined death of the gods and demigods. This event is what would eventually lead to Queen Merica shattering the Elden Ring, allowing the great runes that make up large portions of the Elden Ring to be claimed by the demigods. While we keep talking about the demigods, let's first clarify what exactly this term applies to. There are two primary deities residing in the lands between, being Merica and Radigan. These two would marry Godfrey and Renala, respectively, but would later marry each other instead, with Godfrey being cast out from the lands between, and Renala being left alone to lose her sanity at the Academy of Raya Lucaria. Each of these pairings led to multiple offspring, which are classified as demigods. Usually, you can tell at least one of a demigod's predecessors by looking at the first letter of their name, such as Godric being related to Godfrey, or Radan being related to Radigan. This, funnily enough, means that you can structure an entire family tree of demigods with alliterations around the letters G, R, R, M. These demigods claim the great runes. Here, we see Rani, the spectral witch who is strongly connected to the night and the moon, Morgat, a horned being referred to as an omen who defends the air tree from those who may come to further violate the Golden Order, Moog, Morgoth's twin brother, who we see guiding Makella, a demigod cursed with eternal childhood, somewhere for the sake of his own plans to grasp for power, Rikard, who is allowing himself to be consumed by an ancient serpent as part of a blasphemous ritual, Melania, Makella's twin sister who has been afflicted with a supernatural rot from birth, and Radan, a legendary warrior who has mastered gravity magic. The demigods would engage in a great war for who would become the next Elden Lord, but none would come out on top, leading only to destruction. The Greater Will, which is described as the outer god that created the Elden Ring, abandons the demigods, leaving the next step in this story to those known as Tarnished. The Tarnished, which are essentially a group of cursed humans that return to life after death, were once guided by the Air Tree back to the Lands Between after they were exiled by Queen Merica for them serving no purpose to her. Since then, most Tarnished have lost the guidance of the Air Tree's grace from their eyes. However, grace continues to guide a few particular Tarnished once more. The five tarnished mentioned in the intro are those that were deemed worthy to pursue the mending of the Elden Ring by collecting the great runes from the demigods, creating a new Elden Lord. These five tarnished are Horalu, the chieftain of the Badlands, the leader of the tarnished during their exile, the ever-brilliant Goldmask, the scholar who studies a fundamentalist view of the Elden Ring and the order it can enforce, Thea, the deathbed companion, the woman who would remain by Godwin's deathbed and seeks to restore the order of destined death, the loathsome Dung Eater, the spiteful prisoner who wishes to kill and defile those around him to spread a disease-like curse on body and soul alike. Sir Gideon Ofnir, the All-Knowing, the tarnished who seeks to become Elden Lord by amassing as much knowledge on the subject as he can. And finally, you, a tarnished of no renown, tasked with standing before the Elden Ring and becoming the Elden Lord. Now, there's much more to uncover, such as who coordinated the Knight of the Black Knives, the true nature of Merica and Radigan, or what became of the demigods, but to minimize spoilers, I'll leave that to you to find out on your own. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.